Hi there, welcome to the next one. And I assume that you've already completed the onboarding process. Hope that you haven't uh, gone into some sort of errors. In case you have, uh, we are always uh, happy to help. So let us know. But now we're gonna um, just ask Alice some simple things. So I'm gonna show you how to speak to Alice and this is pretty simple. Uh, so <laughs> you're gonna do it like you would with ChatGPT. You just press return to send your message and then you're gonna re uh, get the reply back. As you can see, um, to the contrary to ChatGPT and the other apps, uh, she knows that my name is Greg. So basically she can recall some information. And this is the information from the onboarding process. But later on, you'll be able to also uh, set to, to tell her some information that she will remember, but that's for another story. So she wants to assist me right now and I can chat to her like I would with ChatGPT, um, except it's not Alice, it's Amy, because I've configured uh, another assistant of mine that is ac accessible from here and I'm gonna show you that in the upcoming lessons. So she's giving me the answers and I can listen to these answers by clicking on this little icon or I can copy this answer straight to the clipboard but as I mentioned, if you go to settings, so command K uh, will also uh, get you there. Uh, you can go to settings and then you have this um, setting copy answers to, clip to the clipboard and automatically the answers that I got from her is copied to my clipboard. So if I ask, for example, writing an email on my behalf, then I don't really need to copy the answer. I can just paste it in my uh, email software and, and it will work that way. Here you can uh, select the model that you're work working with and you've set a default model for your assistant. So every assistant within Alice has its own def default model. If you go to assistant settings, and then you, you probably have only one assistant, uh, that is Alice or some other name that you chose. Then in the settings, you'll see the default model is GPT-4 in this case. So I really recommend you to use GPT-4 or some newer models or even GPT-4 Turbo. However, it's quite expensive. Uh, I, I prefer GPT-4 to just a casual conversations. But if this uh, specific uh, assistant is made to, let's say, translate some text or maybe give you some organized easy to, to uh, imagine answers and you don't really need the best performing model out there, you can easily go uh, for the assistance that is suited to this particular task. You can easily go with, for example, uh, GPT 3.5 and, and then you can select, for example, choose, choose uh, G, uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is great, but also you have the 16K model that will give you just a longer history of conversa within one con conversation. So the turbo means that it should work faster. The 16K here, it means that it contains uh, 16,000 uh, tokens so that you can use within the one conversation. There are different models that I'm going to introduce to you. Some of them won't work if you want to provide a specific API key. For example, for perplexity, we have those models and also Llama models and Mistral. So they won't be available to you if you, if you don't provide a, an appropriate API key. But all the GPT models will work with OpenAI API keys. And as we go along with um, Alice, as we continue to develop it, we'll probably add a lot more models in here and you'll also be able to access some offline models. But for now, for the agents that you want to be smart in general, use GPT-4 or for ter uh, Turbo, or uh, if your agent doesn't have to be so thoughtful and you just need some operations like translating the text or fixing errors or something like this, you can easily go with GPT 3.5 Turbo. And I do recommend this 16K version of it. Okay, so basically this is the setup, but you can also change uh, the GPT-3, um, GPT-4, GPT-4 free model. You can change it here and you can start con new conversation. You can just easily press command N for new conversation or, or click on this button, new chat. But Alice is made that way that you can pretty much use everything just with keyboard shortcuts because it's here to make you more productive. And now you can select the model that you want to start conversation with. So you can uh, change the model on the fly, um, but the default model will be always the default one that you assign to this specific assistant that you're working with. Also, to the right-hand side, you'll find information about the current chat. So in every chat, you have a specific numbers of token. Uh, also, to the right-hand side, you'll have the information about the specific numbers uh, of tokens that are being used in this conversation and that are available in this conversation. So 
every conversation in different models has different number of tokens that you can use. For example, in GPT-4, you can use 8192, but if you change to, let's say, uh, three and a half turbo 16K, as you can see, you have over 16,000 of uh, tokens available for one conversation. So you'll have the uh, info here. And also, if you want to search the past conversations, you're going to press Command K and go to the history. You can press the down arrow, then uh, press return to go to the history. And you can see the history of all of your conversations. You can open the recent conversation. You can also rename it. You can also delete it, or you can uh, look for a particular conversation and just uh, have this search field active. Okay, so this is it about the history. You can also access the history in a convenient way. If you are working with Alice, a full screen, or just enough width to show this Alice's layout, you'll see all the conversations here in the history. You can hide it, but yeah, if you're working with Alice, uh, on a specific task and you are not using some other software and you want to focus, then you can go full screen or just make this window bigger and then you have all the conversations to the left hand side. Now let's go back to the smaller window and you also have three little buttons here and probably we're gonna add some more features and some more buttons in the future. But for now, what you can do is just click on this button to enable this specific mode. In this case, I've enabled the DALI mode that will let me generate images. So all I have to do is just, um, uh, put a cute cut or whatever you want to generate in here and it will automatically start generating images because DALI is also available via API. However, please uh, note that you have to have this feature enabled in your API key and this usually happens after you spent $1 in uh, OpenAI. So make sure at the beginning you have some conversations. Maybe you ask Alice to translate some article of yours or maybe you have a brainstorming about your future business and just use some tokens so that you reach the $1 <laughs> threshold. So basically, uh, after spending $1 for API, you will have enabled most of the features, including DALI. And before that, don't worry about things going sideways sometimes. So for example, some models will can return that you know the operation couldn't be processed or something like this. And this is usually because you haven't uh, spent $1. Uh, and after you do it, it's so much easier. Also, please take a look at what I've done here. I, I've just created a simple prompt, but Alice took care of revising this pro prompt for me. So here is the revised DALI 3 instruction. And she made just a beautiful prompt so that my image can be even better. I can download this image. And uh, this is also how Alice helps us with uh, working with different models. Okay, if I want to just go out from this, I can press escape or I can click on this little button once again. So now it's not active. This little icon will let me speak to Alice. I can send her direct messages. So if I click on that, I can speak, then I can click again. And uh, I will just have what I said um, in writing here that I can send as a message. And this little button here, I'm gonna spend the next lesson talking about this button because it's really, really important. It's one of the best advantages of using Alice for productivity. So please make sure you proceed with me to the next one. See you there.